The Prehistory of Pew, Mark Miyake, Seals Online 2021. What is Pew? Pew is the modern Burmese exonym for an extinct Southeast Asian language. There are three types of evidence for Pew. First, there are epigraphic texts in a unique index script. You can see some of the, dis the distinctive traits of the Pew script in the image to the right. For instance, the long curling E symbols in red, the long tails for the character R in green, and below the main line, small subscript syllable final consonant characters in blue. The second type of evidence for Pew is Tang Dynasty Chinese transcriptions. On the right is the Chinese transcription for the name of the Pew. The third type of evidence for Pew is borrowings into Burmese, such as the Burmese word for country, Pi or Pie, written on the right in blue. The evidence for Pew has the following limitations. First, the Pew corpus is very small. There are few multilingual texts. Third, very little of these texts has been deciphered. Fourth, very little basic vocabulary has been identified. And worse yet, more basic vocabulary is not likely to be found given the genres of few texts which tend to be funerary or religious. Pew is in inscriptions from between 500 and 1300 CE, roughly, located in what is now Burma, particularly in the ruins of the first millennium CE, walled cities now known as Sri Kshetra and Haling. At least some of the population of the walled cities, now known as Sri Kshetra, near the modern city of Pie, borrowed from the Pew word for city, and Halin, were literate in Pew. The other major Pew city is Baithano. Its modern name, the Burmese name for Vishnu. It appears to belong to the same Pew culture as Sri Kshetra and Halin. However, no Pew inscriptions have been found at Baithano. Did all Pew cities necessarily use the so called Pew language? There was an unspoken assumption that Pew language equals Pew culture, but this may or may not be true. At right is a photo I took at a site at Baithano, full of artifacts, but not one item had 
a pew inscription. What happened to the pew? Luce, in his article, The Ancient Pew, cites a Chinese historical text saying that in 832 in the Common Era, Nanjiao, or tribes under Nanjiao, plundered the Pew capital, taking prisoner over 3,000 persons, banished into servitude at the eastern capital of Nanjiao, and told to fend for themselves. As of 863 of the Common Era, the sons and grandsons of the banished Pew were subsisting on fish and insects. And that, says the Manchu, was the fate of the remnants of the pew. But was the end of the pew really so sudden? Luce quoted a Chinese source which may have been overly dramatic. We do not have a pew source about the end of their civilization. All we know for sure is that Burmese took root where the Pew language once flourished. The area in yellow in the CIA map on the right is where Burmese is spoken in Burma. And it overlaps to a considerable extent with where pew inscriptions have been found. In reality, the end of the pew was not so sudden as the pew language survived alongside Burmese for several centuries between roughly 800 and 1300 CE. For instance, both pew and Burmese are attested on different sides of the quadrilingual Hubiaoqi, aka Miazidi, inscription of circa 1112 CE, pictured on the right. The Hubiaoqi, aka Miazidi, inscription has four sides on each pillar. There are two pillars which have almost identical texts. The Gu Biaoqi has been called the Pew Rosetta Stone because each side of the pillars has a different language, Burmese, Pali, Mon, and Pew. These texts are not exact equivalents, but they do roughly correspond to each other. Using the Gubiaoqi Rosetta Stone, it was clear that Pew shares at least a few basic vocabulary items with Old Burmese. For instance, the word for name, Pew Raming, Old Burmese Main, and the pew word for give, ah, matching Old Burmese, b. If pew is related to Burmese, then pew must belong to the same fa language family as Burmese, that is Sino-Tibetan, also known more recently as Trans-Himalayan. The Sino-Tibetan, aka Trans-Himalayan family, has what I consider to be five classical pillars. I define a classical pillar as one of the oldest literary languages. The first of these pillars, and the oldest, is 
Old Chinese. The second is Pew. The third is Old Tibetan. The fourth is Tangut. And the fifth is Old Burmese. All of these dates are subject to argument. I don't want to discuss the exact chronology here, but I think it is uncontroversial that these are the five earliest known literary languages in the Sino-Tibetan, aka Trans-Himalayan family. And out of these languages, Pew is the least understood of the five. Nathan Hill's recent book on Proto-Trans-Himalayan is what I consider to be the state of the art in the field of Trans-Himalayan, aka Sino-Tibetan, comparative linguistics. Hill does not present a complete reconstruction of the Proto-Trans-Himalayan language, but he does present many comparisons and sound laws based on only three of the five pillars, Old Chinese, Old Tibetan, and Old Burmese. He did not include Pew or Tangut. I will be using his work as a reference point in this talk. How could Pew contribute to Proto-Trans-Himalayan Reconstruction? Let's now look at Pew native word structure. The basic form of a punitive word is a syllable preceded by an element that I call pre-initial. I use the vague term pre-initial to refer to both single segments and to minor syllables. In the Pew script, it is often not clear whether I am dealing with a consonant or a minor syllable. So I use the term pre-initial to refer to both. We see here that Pew has a simpler word structure than Old Chinese. Which has a major syllable preceded by an optional minor syllable. The pew element that I call the pre-initial corresponds to the old Chinese minor syllable. In some cases, the pew pre-initial may have really been a minor syllable. In other cases, it may have just been a single consonant. I'm going to now present some examples of pew pre-initials and their correspondences in other Sino-Tibetan languages. First, here's the pew word for three, nhom, which looks quite alien. It doesn't look like the typical Sino-Tibetan word for three, which you would expect to be something like sum or something. But if sound changes are undone, Nhom goes back to a masum with a pre-initial that goes back to a minor syllable ma, matching exactly the minor syllable ma in the Jingpo word for three, masum. Here, the pew pre-initial t in tko for nine matches the Tibetan da in gu. Nine. 
so far, I've shown you examples where pew pre initials or minor syllables match nicely with other Sino Tibetan languages. This is not always the case. For instance, the pew word for water is tdu, with a pre initial t that corresponds to nothing in its probable Tibetan cognate, chu. Here's a case where a pew minor syllable, p, in punga for five, matches a medial consonant, wa, in tangut, ngwa five. This tangut medial w goes back to a minor syllable, p, with some unknown vowel in pre tangut. Here's a case where pu has a simple monosyllable, tak, with no pre-initial or minor syllable corresponding to a Tibetan pre-initial syllable sequence, gachig. Summing up pu pre-initials in historical perspective, Pew may have a pre-initial corresponding to a minor syllable, pre-initial, or even a medial consonant in other languages. However, pew may also have a pre-initial corresponding to nothing in other languages. Conversely, pew may lack a pre-initial corresponding to a pre-initial or minor syllable in other languages. Pew has 43 or 44 onsets, depending on whether glottal stop is included. How much of this large inventory is conservative? And how much of it is innovative? Pew has fricatives mostly absent from the other pillar languages, h, r, sh, r, th, and v. These pew fricatives absent from the other pillar languages may be innovations. They may be the products of lenition paralleling synchronic lenition in pew. For instance, Pali Siri Tathagata in pew pronunciation subject to pew synchronic lenition rules becomes Siri Datarada with medial G leniting to a voiced fricative R. Pew has at least eight liquids, more than almost any other pillar language. Four of these eight have uncertain phonetic values. I have indicated these uncertain liquids in red. I know that two of them are R-like and two of them are L-like, and I know that they come in voiceless and voiced pairs, but beyond that, I am uncertain about their phonetic values. Are these mysterious pew liquids, which I've been writing in red, innovations? These mystery liquids, which I mark in red, are only in pew words of unknown origin. Those words may be substratal borrowings from one or more unknown languages. Pew has a single implosive onset. Is it an innovation? This onset is b. Neither Proto Sino Tibetan, aka Proto 
Trans-Himalayan, nor the other pillar languages have implosive b or implosives of any sort. However, Pew's neighbor, the Mon language, does have implosive b, and it also has an implosive d absent in Pew. Such implosives are common, of course, in Southeast Asian languages. Did Pew acquire an implosive labial b under Mon influence? Arlo Griffiths proposed that the implosive b of Pew may be from an original initial nasal m. The Pew word for not, the negative marker, ba, corresponds to Old Chinese ma, not have, Tibetan ma, not, and Burmese ma, not. But if the Pew implosive b is from a nasal m, where did the pew plain m come from? But if the implosive b of pew is from an earlier nasal m, where does nasal m in pew come from? It could have two kinds of sources. First, nasal m words in pew could have been borrowed into the language after the shift of original native m to implosive b. Also, original nasal m would have been preserved in native clusters and such as r m in name. The r would block the shift of m to an implosive. So far, I've been talking about onsets in Pew that are absent in the other pillar languages. What onsets does Pew lack relative to those other languages? Although the Pew onset inventory is very large, 43 or 44 consonants, it doesn't have everything. Hill, in his book, reconstructs Proto-Trans-Himalayan affricates Tz and Z. But Pew has neither Tz nor Z. The Pew word for child is Sah, corresponding to Old Chinese Z and Tibetan Tsa. Hill reconstructs initial Z, an affricate for this word. The comparative data on the right allows me to conclude that Pew shifted original affricate Z to a fricative s. Old Burmese has a word for child that is sa with a fricative instead of the expected sa with an affricate. Perhaps the old Burmese word for child is a loan for, from pew because it reflects the pew shift of the affricate s to fricative s instead of preserving the original affricate as in other Burmese words.
The pew word for three is nhom, in which the H in the pew form corresponds to S in non-pew words for three. So S became H in pew. So far, I've mentioned two consonant shifts in pew, one which I could call the child shift of affricate sa to fricative sa. The other I could call the three shift of fricative s to fricative h. I can put these shifts together. At the Proto-Sino-Tibetan stage, there was a affricate sa and a fricative S. Then in Pew, the three shift occurred and S backed to H. After the three shift, the shift of S to H left a gap. It would be rather strange for a language to have S and H, but no simple fricative S. Thus Pew then underwent the child shift in which the affricate S lost its stop element and became a fricative S, filling the gap left by original S, which had become H. After the child shift, There is no more tsa, and there is a new sibilant fricative sa filling the gap. Both of the sound changes that I have just described could be put together into a single chain shift. The, the sibilant s becomes h, leaving a gap to be filled by the affricate s, which becomes a new sibilant fricative s. Summing up pew onsets in historical perspective, pew has a set of innovative fricatives, pew has a set of innovative liquids, Pew has an innovative implosive b, and Pew has undergone an, a chain shift of s to h and s to s. Now I want to discuss Pew vowels in historical perspective. Pew has a seven vowel system. Hill reconstructed a six vowel system for Proto Trans Himalayan, aka Proto Sino Tibetan. Hill's six vowel system is sufficient to account for the four non-pew pillar languages. Pew has one vowel absent from Hill's reconstruction of Proto-Trans Himalayan, the vowel a ah, in red. Did Pew preserve a vowel lost in the other pillars? that is, the vowel a in red. Let's look at a word containing this seventh vowel, the word for one, dak in pew. In the other pillar languages, 
pu a corresponds to the mid front vowel e. And Hill reconstructs e at the proto trans Himalayan level for the word one. I conclude then on the basis of this correspondence set and others that original a lowered to a in pew why not derive pew a from original a the pew mid front vowel a is rare much rarer than a There are no known etymologies for non-Indic pu a words. Pu a words are at least in part borrowings, for example, from Indic, post-dating the a to a lower, lowering shift. For instance, the pu word for queen is dewi from Sanskrit or Pali, devi. How conservative are the other pew vowels? In theory, pew could preserve the other Proto-Trans-Himalayan, aka Proto-Sino-Tibetan vowels intact. I indicate these other vowels in red. I've already shown that original A lowered to A in pew. But the reality is more complex. Just as the front vowel a in the proto language lower to a in pew, a back vowel u in the proto language lower to o in pew. Pew has go for nine corresponding to Tibetan dgu with u instead of o. However, pu does also have the word tdu, water, with an u vowel matching Tibetan chu, water. Are we observing a split or a merger? Did Pew split a protovowel U into U and O in different environments? The trouble is that the two words I've just mentioned, to do water and go nine, both have roughly the same structure. They're both open syllables with the same pre-initial and with a single consonant before a labial vowel. So the environments are fairly similar. Or do pu, u, and o in tadu and tako preserve an earlier distinction between, let's say, proto-u and proto-u lost in the other pillar languages. I am hesitant to propose a merger of two protovowels in languages other than pew. There is not enough data to securely reconstruct an, an, an extra vowel u. The goal for nine could be irregular. Pew has undergone a merger of u uh and a. Uh. For instance, the pew word for child, sah, corresponds to old Chinese, tz. And from that, we can conclude that pew lowered proto schwa to the low vowel a. Uh.
If proto schwa became pu a, where does pu schwa come from? First, reduction. The pu word poli grandson is reduced to pala when compounded. Second, schwa may be in loans and expressives postdating the lowering of schwa to a. Third, it is possible that schwa has been retained in some environments in pu. A potential case of schwa retention in pu is the numeral seven, which in pu was chnet, the final t is uncertain. This numeral has an unusual set of correspondences. Here, I contrast the normal set of correspondences for proto schwa on the left with the unusual set in the numeral for seven. I suspect that the environment of a preceding alveolar and a following dental or, or alveolar has somehow been conducive to the retention of schwa in pew, whereas it seems that schwa has fronted to e in Old Chinese and pre-Burmese. Summing up pew vowels from a historical perspective. Pew lowered original A to A and acquired a new A to fill the gap left by the shift of original A to low A. Original U has at least in one case lowered to O. Original schwa has lowered to A, though perhaps in certain environments, such as that of the numeral seven, original schwa has been retained in pew. There is one known case of the reduction of E to E in a compound. The only unchanged protovowels appear to be O and A. However, not all synchronic O and A in pew are from original O and A. Some are from original U and Schwa. Now I'm going to discuss pew codas in historical perspective using Hill's Proto Trans Himalayan, aka Proto Sino Tibetan codas, as a starting point. I have added two codas to his list. One is Wa, which appears in his reconstructions, but is not in his official list. And I have added S, which is uncontroversially in Old Chinese and Tibetan. Pew has most of the same codas as Proto-Sino-Tibetan, except that it has a at the top right, and it is missing four codas that I have crossed out. What are the pew reflexes of the lost codas? Final glottal stop and final S probably merged into H, 
This merger has probable parallels in Tangut. The fate of proto-uvular Q is unknown in Pew. Likewise, the fate of Hill's unique final cluster, LR, is also unknown in Pew. Summing up Pew phonology in historical perspective, Pew has a set of pretty conservative pre-initials. Pew onsets have many innovations and have undergone a chain shift. Pew has a new seventh vowel, a, ah, some shifts, but there has been no great vowel shift. That is, the entire system has not been drastically transformed. Pew codas are pretty conservative. The bottom line is that phonologically, Pew is relatively archaic, but not exciting. I want to say a few words about other aspects of Pew from a historical perspective. For instance, Pew morphology. Pew typologically is isolating at first glance. It has no inflectional morphology that has been identified apart from gay, I, which has a possessive form, gi, my. Derivational affixation in Pew is poorly understood. The bottom line is that Pew morphologically is probably not conservative. It lacks the extensive morphology that is, for instance, in pre tangut and probably also the proto-language. Now a few words about Pew syntax. Pew syntax is generally generic tibetan burman it's like Tibetan, Burmese, and Tangut. Subject, object, verb, noun, adjective, order. Pew has a calc of the Sanskrit relative pronoun yet. Pew borrowed a relativizer ma from old mon. Pew borrowed a relative clause structure from old mon. Bottom line is, is that there's nothing exciting to see here but the results of contact. A few words about the Pew lexicon in historical perspective. Pew only has a small number of recognizable Sino Tibetan roots, mostly basic vocabulary. Pew has some Indic loans, but also calcs of Indic. Only two words are known to be shared with mon, the relativizer ma, and tar, gold. The vast majority of the lexicon is non-Sino-Tibetan. The bottom line is that the pure lexicon is definitely not conservative. Can Pew be Pew bears no superficial strong resemblance to any particular branch of Sino-Tibetan. Any resemblances are likely to be shared retentions which are not evidence for subgrouping. I have not found any shared innovations which would be evidence for subgroup. So my answer is no. Conclusions and speculation. Pew remains an isolate within Sino-Tibetan. If 
pre-Pew ever had the morphological complexity of pre-Tangut and possibly Proto-Sino-Tibetan. It was almost entirely lost after moving down into what is now Burma. But Pew gained a tremendous amount of non-Sino-Tibetan vocabulary, presumably from substratal languages. Pew might tell us more about those languages than about Proto-Sino-Tibetan. I conclude by saying thank you to SEALS for hosting my Pew Tetralogy over these past five years, starting with Pew Numerals in 2016, Pew Phonology in 2017, Pew Grammar in 2018, and now Pew Prehistory in 2021. Might there be a fifth talk for Pew, the fifth pillar of Sino-Tibetan? Maybe someday. <laughs>